Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. This is one of the most unique Bibles I have ever run across. It's from the Canadian Bible Society, and it's got an introduction by uh, the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles. And it is a tour de force. I was surprised how much good he had to say and his thoughts on the King James. But not just that, this Bible has a ton of stuff in there. Book summaries, glossary of archaic terms, one year Bible reading plan, illustrated biblical and agricultural calendars, uh, and to aid deeper explanation, interpretation, text, collection of classic phrases rooted in the KJV that are now part of everyday language. I'm just reading this off the back. Specially compiled concordance containing almost 18,000 terms, new names indexed with a complete text of references for each name. So let's dive in. So one of the first things I noticed when I opened this Bible up, and it was just about mint condition was just, again, how well they did this 400-year anniversary. I mean, this is just really nice. The end papers here, just gorgeous. And the ribbon marker is just this burgundy that's, again, just gorgeous. And then it came with a King James prayer, like a bookmark in here that's in perfect mint. This whole Bible, I would rate it, you know, in uh, near, no, I would do this in extra fine if I was grading, like an 8.5 out of 10 or something. It's just great. In the inside more than the other. Then it has a little thing, you know, Canadian Bible Society, beautiful glossy presentation page, published to commemorate the 400th anniversary of the KJV. Um, so it's obviously done 2011. British Informed Bible Society. Okay, so at the top, it kind of confuses you. It says Clarence House, but I, I'm assuming maybe that's one of His Royal Highness's houses. I, you know, being from America, you see HRH, it's like, huh. You know, I'm not real totally sure. I remember one time years ago, I've done a review on this book, I think, called The Antichrist and a Cup of Tea. I forget who wrote it. And they, their postulation was that Prince Charles was the Antichrist. I just, I don't know. He, you know, we won't even go there. The desire of women, a lot of different things. Why well, he's probably not. But, you know, let's just keep reading here. Okay, so this is what Prince Charles said. And I, I don't think I'll have time to read the whole thing. It's not a lot, though. He wrote in very short paragraphs. He knows how to write good. Who knows if he had somebody write it for him. But I, it sounds like something he would write. The 400th anniversary of the publication of the authorized version of the Bible is one which I am delighted to be able to celebrate. I am sure that I am far from alone in appreciating the grandeur and the lasting quality of this translation. What it stood for when first published and what it continues to embody is something very close to my heart. A lyrical beauty that conveys a deep sense of the sacred. Such is the achievement of the translators that it is not not only stood the test of time, but to my mind, has never been surpassed. So he's KJV only, man. So <laughs> let's keep going. King James I, in giving his approval for this new translation in 1604, called for some special pains to be taken by the best learned men. The level of scholarship was the highest possible over a period of seven years. The result was a fresh, invigorating new version of the Bible, which became a benchmark of civilization. Civilization. Today it holds no less important a place. It is part of the very architecture of our culture. Think about this before you jump to new translations. For my part, I've always given a high priority to the spiritual roots of our society. I do believe that the survival of civilized values, as we have inherited them from our ancestors, depends on the corresponding survival in our hearts of that profound sense of the sacred. Think, please. These values are not held just by a few people, but by many around the world. In this respect, the authorized version, King James, provides a unique link between nations. It is a precious inheritance worth every effort to preserve and to honor. So I'm reading this and I'm just like, 
man, this guy's after my own heart here. If he means all this, I assume he does. Few can argue against the dignity, power, and cadence of the authorized version. The translators aimed for nothing less than theological and literary excellence. They could certainly never be accused of banality. He's got that exclamation point. When we want to convey something that goes beyond the ordinary, we need language that does the same, transcending our everyday speech. If the word of God can seem a bit over our heads, perhaps it's supposed to be. Elevated is what God is. It is part of his very nature. He has the H capitalized there. I mean, wow. Now, we're going to get into the review of the Bible because it's got some amazing stuff in this Bible. But I just was so stunned. I felt it was just good to read this. And I didn't plan on reading the whole thing, but we might because it's so it's very short paragraphs and it's almost over here. It's a very little bit on the next page. We're almost done with this page. Today, the English language is too often debased. This Bible preserves a tradition which we ignore at our peril. Because remember, he who controls language, read 1984, controls how you think. Uh, we have to recognize that we need ever higher standards to communicate effectively in our modern world, whether for economic success or simply at the level of making ourselves understood and feeling connected to others. The English language found in all its richness in this translation is a source of pride and a legacy to be handed on with care. Last paragraph. The glorious thing about this anniversary is that through this exceptional translation, the generations are linked across the centuries. As we celebrate its achievement, it will be introduced to a new generation, meeting the profound human need for continuity and permanence and helping to maintain standards of quality that will serve our children well into the future. Think, think about that. That's all good stuff. Okay, now let's look at the rest of this Bible. I was just so impressed by that. I was like, wow. I mean, he didn't say repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of sins. You know, I obviously have preferred he said that. But for what he's got, that's good stuff. We need to pray against the Holy Ghost. The Archbishop of Canterbury speaks with tongues every day. The leading Anglican theologian, N.T. Wright, speaks in tongues a bunch. I've done videos on that. So... It's not out of the realm of possibility for people to get the Holy Ghost. There was just a Holy Ghost filled guy just gave President Trump a Bible study. He, when he opened his campaign in 2016, it was at an apostolic church in Detroit, Michigan. So don't ever underestimate these things. This thing's not done in a corner. It has the translators to the reader getting back on this Bible. That's a good thing. So let's uh, turn this down. You know, just solid, good, readable, probably eight and a half, nine point print. Everybody needs to read the translators to the reader. People get mad. I, you know, like I have to scratch my nose doing a review or something people comment on that i'm just like look, this is real this isn't we're not doing like one video a week with a present it's like a vlog we do multi we've done over four thousand videos we you know so that's just what it is so introduction to the books of the bible i'm sorry i'm not perfect i just you know we we have to scratch our ear sometimes. Okay, so here's Old Testament. So this is what I mean about this being a unique Bible. So like you get to Genesis and you get this map. And then you get some illustrations. So this is done by the British and Foreign Bible Society. And again, it's not large print. And this is not a large Bible. I really appreciate the dust jacket. This deep burgundy is just gorgeous. Let's see how it looks without the dust jacket. It looks really nice without the dust jacket, too. It's kind of corrugated, which I've noticed a lot of fine textbooks are corrugated. 
just kind of see how it's done. So just a really well done, you know, and fitting for the occasion. King James has changed the course of history for the good. Um, like BC 1900, I'll show you. So there's not references per se. And another thing that I personally like, I think everybody should read the Bible through in a paragraph form at some point because that's how most of the originals were written. You know, Lamentations, 22 verses, Psalm 119, not, but you know, most of the Bible was written in paragraph form. So this looks to be kind of paragraph form, but you can see all the stuff here, like in Job, it's giving you pictures. I was in Psalms earlier and it just gives um, musical instruments, what they looked like. And so it's really a good Bible. And so if you can find one of these pretty inexpensive, like on eBay or somewhere, you would probably avail yourself to do that. It's just really good. I don't think it's got introductions. I'm just going to double check on that. There's the musical instruments. Yeah, it doesn't. But, uh... I mean, I'll just show you this real quick. And so you can see like in Psalms, because it's poetic literature, it's more versified, but then you have plenty of room to write in the margins. So again, it's not large print, very well done. Decorative headbands, tail bands, and like a silver or white and red. Um, not a lot in the margins. I don't want to measure the margins, but not a lot of room to write on the sides. Maybe quarter inch, half inch, half inch, and really nothing in the gutter. But like second epistle of Paul to the Corinthians. I mean, you can just see. So this Bible's just well done to the nth degree. Just... I'm not sure they could have done a better job with this Bible. Now, did it come in leather or anything? I don't know. I, I just don't know any of those things. So, the Bible itself is, we're going to see how many pages the Bible itself is. Do, 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 do. It is about 972 pages. Now, this is one of the most fascinating things. You rarely find this in the Bible. I found it in a few, but maybe not this. There's actually a separate book with all this in there of common phrases from the King James Bible, how it has affected our language. I've actually been doing that in the Schuyler Canterbury. Every time I run across something, I'll try to make a notation in the back of the Bible. It's got a lot of good pages to write in. So, you know, it gave us the Declaration of Independence. It gave us the Constitution. It brought freedom around the world. Did a lot of good things. Gave us Pentecost, you know, the uh, Azusa Street, the famous stories of the Bible here. One year reading plan, glossary of archaic terms. See, this is really good. It's like they just, they really must have had a committee or something. They just sat around and said, what can we do? And they did a great job to, uh, to do this. And uh, then the concordance, the concordance is so well done. You know, it's a little smaller print, it has a little bit of ghosting in it, but it's very organized. It's not like you're Cambridge Concordance in the back that's kind of jumbled, which I, I've never liked that much till recently I got where I liked it, but then I think I'm beginning to not like it again, if that makes any sense. So, but a very large concordance, and then like a glossary of names like Eden, where to find Eden at, uh, besides the concordance part. So that's a great thing. Heading to the end here. 
and then you have a fantastic outline chart of Bible history um, they have dates but not for the beginning if you know what I'm saying they're kind of skittish about ushers dates it tells you most accurate dates and how they've kind of used that as a fulcrum so this is just a, a good little Bible here. What can I say? It's got a lot of stuff. It'll be useful to me. Some of the things I'm doing, research and things like that. It's about uh, eight and three quarters, which that's I would have thought it was at least nine inches tall. It's not. It's six and a half inches wide and about 1.48 inches thick, something like that great Bible if you can pick one up the Holy Bible 400th anniversary edition God bless talk with you later love you in Jesus name